have a quick question. Are we being secretly recorded for like the rubber part too? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I think I think it's happening. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hello. Um, hello. Yes. <laughs> My name is Biltres. Um, I'm with uh, La Ibero. And, well, um, I have a question related more to uh, the lyrics of one of your songs. Uh, I listened to the Fable single. I thought it was brilliant. And, well, I had a particular question about the song Tony. In that song, uh, there's just a couple of lyrics that stand out for me, which is uh, the lyrics, I like to see them win. And the fact that, um, oh, wait a second, that you feel like it's going in the right direction. And I just, w I was just wondering, who is them and what is going in the right direction? If you could clarify it, of course, you, you don't need to tell me, of course. <laughs> I mean, it's not that there's, there's no one secret answer. I think it, it's difficult to explain what I'm doing sometimes with, with lyrics. Mm -hmm. they, they have a personal connection for me, but I feel like, especially a phrase like that, it can almost be like tapping into someone else's thought. It's almost like if you could tune like from a radio and catch like just like passing fragments of someone's thinking. But it's not just that either. It's not just like absurdism. It's not just like non sequiturs. It has, you know, there's a spirit to it and a sentiment. But in that way, it's almost like what it evokes for me may be different to what it evokes for you. And to me, I don't hold the true one, Do you, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I think it kind of like, in a way as a singer, it allows me to experience the music in a, in a way that feels right. Like this is the sentiment that resonates correctly with the sounds. So in that way, it's very true and very honest to me. But in terms of being something that I could like explain more deeply and more specifically, it doesn't really exist like that in, in that particular instance. Yeah, I hope that's clear. Yeah. What is the meaning of the orange in your oh, new BBS? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's uh, Van Alpert, the director. That was his little pet uh, idea that he, he got a real kick out of it. Um, and I think he's an inspired guy. And I think a little bit like with the lyrics, it's like it's, it's not that there's a secret meaning. It's that it's very evocative. The spirit of it does something for him. And then I think he sort of found ways to uh, experience the meaning as it went. You know, like I think the guy who takes the really like aggressive bite at the end of the song and then like there's a there's something that comes from that whereas I'm kind of like idly peeling an orange and I feel like that <laughs> expresses something else. So I think it's just like a device for him to <clears throat> to work with imagery and, and you know, feelings. So have you read the book uh, Meet Me in the Bathroom and what are your thoughts on it in general? Definitely have not read it. Um, I like the the author, Lizzie Goodman's a friend of ours uh, who I've known since the beginning of the band. So I felt when she approached us, I felt that I should be honest and open with her because if anyone was going to document that time, she would do a good job of it. But I don't, you know, I think uh, I don't want to read that. I read a little bit of it just to make sure I didn't come off as a complete fool. <laughs> It's kind of hard to read, though. I mean, it's kind of, uh, just to, and by nature of how she kind of came up with the content and wrote the book, it feels weird to go back and, and read it because it's like a conversation in that, in that form, you know, the way the book is written. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. If you could ask the universe a question and get the absolute truth, what would you like to know? <laughs> Ask the universe? The universe. Like that's a question for you then. In <laughs> español, <laughs> Paul. Please, Paul, in Spanish. Make, make no, a no, rhyme. No, no. Come on, let's hear it. <laughs> Sam and Daniel, too. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, I could say there's like a, I don't know if it's Native American, but there's like an ancient myth about like the universe and stuff, and it's a story. So the question relating to the story would be, is it turtles all the way down? <laughs> and I don't know if you know this, like somebody asks the wise man, like, uh, you know, the, where, what is the earth 
on and the wise man or the wise woman, the shaman says it's on the back of a turtle and then the person says, what's the turtle standing on? And the answer is it's turtles all the way down. And what I really like about that is like in today, we like, you know, the whole idea of multiverse and sort of like um, infinite universes, et cetera. I kind of find it interesting that modern science is sort of now approaching on something which sounds very similar to this ancient interpretation about the universe, which is that it's turtles all the way down. So I just think, I find that very fascinating. That would be a question I might ask. So the question would be, is it turtle? Is it in fact turtles all the way down? Yeah. <laughs> How can you beat that? <laughs> Hello, guys. Hello. Este, mi pregunta es, sabemos que tienen, han tenido una relación trabajando con el director David Lynch. ¿Alguna vez han pensado trabajar en algún soundtrack como otras bandas, como ha sido Nine Inch Nails o Arcade Fire, o en, en un soundtrack completo o alguna canción como lo hizo The Killers? Do we want to do a scoring, like, like... Like a soundtrack, like, with David Lynch, I guess, yeah. Or in, in the, or in, in a the movie. Yeah. Like that Arcade Fire has done. I mean, I know Mogwai has done it very well. I didn't know Arcade Fire, mm -hmm. and I don't know The Killers, what they have done with a film. Right. Arcade Fire did the soundtrack to her? Or like the score or the sound? Score. No shit. <laughs> with vocals and everything or just instrumental? Uh, no, instrumental. Yeah, I mean, we, we should consider it, I think. Why not? It would be fun. Yeah, those directors yeah. gotta have to come knocking with those invitations, and then we'll come responding. I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, welcome to Mexico. We are very happy you here. The, my question is for Daniel. Daniel, how do you feel uh, playing the keyboards on stage for first time, and how's that different from playing the guitar? I think it's amazing, by the way. That, that's really kind of you. Uh, it's 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 very different, obviously for me, and it, it you know, it's becoming more and more comfortable, and it's very fun, and it it feels like a moment for our, for me at least, on stage every time it happens because the way we ha you know it feels like a feature of our within our set, like we're taking it down to a different kind of place. Um, but at the same time, I think you know, I may personally when I'm playing now on the keyboards, it's getting to the level that I'm able to kind of feel similarly to how I'm playing to get into the music, to not think so much about what I'm doing, to just let my hands take the movement and just, um, but it's exhilarating and it's, it's, it feels good to do something just a bit different and you know, like that's not autom not any playing guitar is ever automatic for me on stage, but it's not anything I can, playing keyboards I cannot take for granted. I really have to focus a little bit and not lose track of things, but it's been really fun and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Thank you so much, that's really kind of you. I wondering to the how you come into terms or how do you inspire with this new sound? I love and I'm wondering what were your artists, groups, music, films, anything that inspires you with this new album and this new sound? I mean I th it's it's hard to uh to put specifics I think on like what influences us for like anything we write, especially the more and more we make records. Uh I think it's just like a deep need to write music and then a, a deep enjoyment of what we're able to create together and where we're taking these pieces of music. So you just, it's something, it's like a, it's something you just focus on that and where you want to go with that and you're not thinking so much about outside influences. Maybe everything from like your daily life is influencing you, anything you saw in a museum or film or travel, but not necessarily specifically from like other music. And then, com you know, compounded with the fact that you're making a record during a pandemic and all this. so. That probably has some sort of like subconscious influence in its own way because it's made us it made us do things remotely. But ultimately, I think at the same time, if it influences, it's maybe the, the the joy it gives you during a difficult time to be like, okay, well, the world is pretty crazy right now, but we're really enjoying making this music and and the progression of that music and and where you want to take it. So it was kind of like help for me personally. It was like helpful just to be focusing on this, even though so many things around us were uncontrollable and crazy and unpredictable, but it was nice to see where we're going with this, and it was nice to put some passion into, to, you know, to the album and, and to be really pleased with the result. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, thanks for giving us a chance to, for our students to pick your brains and stuff. Uh, I was wondering if you could 
share with us if you guys have home studio setups. What do they look like? And if that's something you started due to the pandemic or something you already had, or you know, how's that working for you? Is that Kyoshi? <laughs> What's up, man? It's an old friend of mine. Imagine my surprise when I heard you wanted to hear from my students. Yeah, oh, that's cool, man. Great to see you. You too. Um, we've we've we always had kind of a, a, a setup like maybe not a home studio, but we've always had something in our rehearsal studios, uh, probably since I joined the band, um, for the simplicity of just, you know, capturing demos without having to go to another studio, you know, and kind of like, you know, you can kill the process over demoing something. So, and, um, but to further answer your question, the home studio has been an addiction of mine. He's know. the most gear gear guy yeah <laughs> it's pretty intense um, but at the same time you know it's not something to be abused you know I mean it, it served my personal setup served a great benefit for the whole process uh, in writing this record um, but it's not like that's where it ends you know it's kind of where it begins and you kind of don't want to go over the top there's a term chasing the demo. You know, it's like to be avoided at all costs. I mean, what's Daniel and I couldn't do a demo that could compete with the final, but Sam could. So I do think it's like, you know, we've had that issue in the past, I think, with NYC, right? Where, yeah. Yeah, Sam's demo can be so good that you get in trouble mm. with that feeling <laughs> of like, shoot, now the final's not matching up to the magic. And you work with some producers who say, like, so then use the demo because, like, it's an impossible chase sometimes. But, you know, I personally use, like, Logic, and my demos sound like shit, so it's not <laughs> a big issue for me. Yeah. All right. Well, that was it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Questions? Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Bueno, pues, muchas gracias a todos nosotros por estar aquí. De nuevo, gracias a Mastodontica por el spot fresco. A la bandota que van a estar el fin de semana. Arre. De parte de... Ah, también unos regalitos. Sí. Thank you. Bueno, yo pasé una época muy importante de mi vida aquí eh, cuando when I knew Kyoshi and I had some other friends uh, who were very influential for me musically. Uh, so I, I had a lot of inspiration that came from my close friends here in Mexico. And um, then when the band came down here, the audience being so incredible, it's just sort of made it even more special. But I would say it's, it's been an, uh, extremely important for me creatively since I was in high school. Thank you. Un aplauso más y que se escuche bien fuerte. Arre.